it were, the noise of thunder. One of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse. Shalom. <laughs> Can't find any place to go and hide. That there isn't noise. Somebody's doing some construction here. Somebody's doing it there. There's people coming in and out of the house. Can't be out in the yard. There's dogs barking. Eh, what a crazy world. Uh, first, I'd like to say a prayer. Then I would like to talk to you guys about my latest dream. I've had so dear Heavenly Father I ask that you would allow the Holy Spirit to reveal to those that are listening to this video the message that is for their hearts I ask that you'd give them strength and help them on this journey that we call the way how we are seeking to work out our own salvation with fear and trembling that you'd bring peace to their hearts father god you know that we who truly love you and are seeking you when we fall short of what you have for us when we fall into sin we it hurts us and we have great sorrow over our letting you down in our daily walk so I ask that you would allow the Holy Spirit to be with those that are downtrodden, who are feeling this, feeling like failures, that you'd let them feel the presence of the Holy Spirit and of your Son. Your word, which is the law, came as a light to shine on us and show us that none of us could get in to the kingdom according to the law. Moses was an example of that, God. How that under the law, not even Moses could go into the promised land. Only those who had faith in your word. They were the only ones that were able to go into the promised land. Moses, under the law, had to die outside on the mountain. Being able to see the promised land, but not being able to pass into it. Because it was an example for us to show us that under the law, even the most closest man you couldn't make it under the law into the kingdom Moses was that man he the Bible said was a friend of God he saw you you passed the law to him yet he did not go into the promised land he was able to see it through the law but he could not go in and possess it it's only by faith so we ask that you touch each and every one in the name of Yeshua in the name of your son we ask it. Amen. Okay, uh, first I want to talk to you about symbolism. You know, there's a lot of people that have dreams, and there's a lot of people calling people false prophets and stuff like that. And you have to understand that Peter is a prime example of this. The Word of God tells you everything you need to know uh, to live your life, to understand what God is doing for you or talking to you about. Hey, we're in my car. But anyway, my truck. Um, so, and you guys know this guy. Yeah, he's a cool guy. But he's old. Anyway, um, Peter was, uh, during in the book of Acts, he became hungry, he said, ravenously hungry. And then he fell into a trance and he saw a sheet coming down from heaven. And it unfolded and inside of it were all these unclean animals. And the voice of the, voice of the Lord Jesus said... Yeshua said to him, Peter, arise, slay and eat. And Peter said, not so, Lord. And then he saw this two more times. So it was a, a total of three times. And on the third time, Peter also said the same thing, not so. And Jesus said, what I've called clean, are you saying is unclean? Is that what you're saying? And so Peter came out of the trance. And then he was pondering this vision that he'd seen from the Lord wondering what does this mean and 
there was a knock on the door and it was these three men and and they said hey there's a guy named Cornelius that needs your help and we need to take you there and Peter said and then I supposed that and I'm paraphrasing all this and then I supposed that that's what Christ had meant by this vision that I saw that these unclean men because they were Gentiles and to the Jew at the time they were unclean that I was supposed to go with them now the Lord could have appeared to G to uh, Peter and said hey Peter there's three guys coming they're gonna knock on the door uh, their master named Cornelius as a believer I want you to go to his house and pray for his family and him bring the gospel to him no God used a vision that was hard to understand so think about that some of you who are attacking Christians about their dreams and visions stuff like that a lot of times the Lord tells us things and we can't understand it that happened many times Paul the Apostle a guy came up to him wrapped a belt took Paul's belt off wrapped it around Paul's own hands and said you're gonna be led away in chains to Rome or you see what does that mean that was also Paul could write those books in there to the Gentiles to bring some salvation because it's through faith in Christ not our works it's through we do works and we and we have this unctioning inside of us to do the right thing because we love the Lord it's like some guy that's a professional football player and he misses a play and he beats himself up over it not because he lost any money or he wasn't gonna get paid or anything else it's because his own personal desire to excel so if you love the Lord you're trying to excel in him right and so whenever you when you fall short of that you feel bad so back in 2011 the Lord had told me that the end of time would be when they came to take my home and they proposed to take his and so that is just now coming to pass well at the time I had a dream about the pastor of our church and he came to church where in a certain uh, I in this dream it was a rapture dream and I walked into this little country church it was on a Sunday and, a, and uh, it was packed 200 people or so there there was only a few seats and as I was going down the aisleway the pastor of the church where I've been going for the past three months stepped in front of me and prevented me from passing and he said I don't know why these people are attacking me I don't know what I could have done and he was wearing these certain clothes that I'd never seen him wear and his face was clean shaven he had a goatee and a little mustache and that was gone and the rapture occurred and he was left behind and the Lord told me it was because he wouldn't humble himself and repent and that I needed to give him this message so uh, I dreamed that on a Sunday morning it was my third rapture dream where the rapture happened and uh, so I went to church and and lo and behold he was wearing those clothes from the dream and he told everybody in the church hey I've had these for a year my wife bought them for me but I've never wanted to wear them he goes you know I like these cool clothes that I usually wear this is too business like and stiff and they were a very unique shirt it had gold threads or silver threads sewn in it and it sparkled and, and he said his wife had bought them for him and then he felt led to wear that that morning and then he said those things that he said in the dream so I told him about it after church and he of course he denied the whole thing and the Lord told me at the same time that he needed 200 extra dollars a month and I told him that and he said well the only thing you're right about is the 200 dollars but you could have guessed that a week later the he calls me back and apologizes and tells me you know you're right Gary about what you were saying it is from the Lord and every detail of it and I told him a lot of things and I don't have time to tell you right now everything but it all came to pass and then the Lord told me to tell him if he doesn't humble himself and repent he'll quit the ministry and so uh, I told him that and he said no way well two weeks later he came in and quit the ministry after being a minister for 15 years so um, when I had this dream about the rapture occurring in the church was Christmas garland gold Christmas garland and I woke up and I was like Lord are you coming are you saying you're coming this year or by Christmas something along that lines because I saw the Christmas garland and then I dreamed I was watching Scotty Clark's video the rapture song so I took that to mean that yes he was saying yes I am coming and then after that I, I woke up and I had a third dream that night about a, a nine point something earthquake in Los Angeles knocked the freeways down and stuff so anyway long story short 
the i thought the rapture would happen in 2011 because of that but then the lord reminded me this year he said didn't i tell you that it wouldn't be the end of time until they they came to take your house and they proposed to take mine well that's happening this year they're they're moving on my house we had to move out but i still have a few things there i still own the home but they're coming to get it there's no way around it so um like i said i still own it it's still mine i may go back for a few weeks but anyway uh i had a recent dream because i was asking the lord because i i'm just like you guys you know i i have things that bother me in the flesh too you know and i i fall down all the time and i'm nobody perfect it's just god deals with certain people why did he pick paul out of those why or saul why did he pick peter all these men he picked he came along and said hey you you and you i'm taking you with me why there was all kinds of other people in there but he chose them you know for a job so maybe that's what this is about i, I don't know but anyway uh i was praying about that my fact that i'm a failure in my own eyes with god and i was praying about it and it was late at night it was like 11 30 it was 12 32 and i was praying and asking god about this i hadn't couldn't go to sleep and so i went in the bathroom and i was crying out to god and telling him what a failure i was and help me you know and staying in his altar with tears and I went in and laid down and it was about 1240 and I fell asleep and I had a dream that I was with this guy in this wooden, like a shack. And he's like, hey, get ready. We got to go meet these two guys. And this is an older guy, like a farmer. And he said, we got to meet these guys before we leave in my plane or something along that lines. And so I was like getting dressed, you know, I got everything ready and I was going to take a gun with me. I don't know why I had fear of these two guys. And I was telling the Lord this in this prayer, you know, hey, I'm worried, you know, about my position with you. So I guess that's what it was about. But anyway, in the dream, I got this gun, but it was too big. It was like a, like a 10. Sorry about that interruption. My camera only runs for like 12 minutes. It's a Pentex KX 35 millimeter DSLR uh, digital camera. So the sensor in the back gets hot and it shuts down after 12 or 15 minutes, but it usually runs 12 or 10 minutes. But anyway, back to my story. Uh, this gun was hanging. I couldn't, I was trying to put it in my waistband. It wouldn't go in there. So I just stuck it in my front pocket and it was hanging all out and all weird like some 10 year old kid with a grown up gun, you know? And so I picked this jacket up and I was put it under my arm and I didn't want the guy to see it. And we walked out of the building and it was an open field that had been plowed. And in the field, middle of the field was an airplane, a blue airplane with a white lightning bolt on the side. It was a high wing plane, like a, you know, Cessna or something, but it was an older fabric plane. And we walked around the back side of it. And on the other side of the plane, there was a pulpit in the middle of this plowed field. And the two guys walked up, you know, and the one guy says, Hey, I, uh, I've got some cranberry wine I want to share with you. And, uh, but first we need to pray. And as soon as he said that, the other guy was a little bit behind him. So both of them stepped forward. So there was three men with me now. And, and they said, we want to pray. And we want to pr pray the first five verses. And they put, pulled out some pieces of the Bible that were torn off and they put it on the pulpit. And he unlocked the pulpit and pulled out this one gallon jug of of uh, cranberry wine and he said yeah i make it myself and everything and uh he was telling me how he made it with so many cooked cups of sugar and fresh uh cranberries and i said yeah i remember somebody in church talking about people making that and he says yeah that's me i make it it's mine and i want to share it with you but we must pray first i want you to pray he says i want you to pray with me the first five verses and then i saw the book of john is what I thought I saw but then he began to pray the Lord's Prayer you know our Father who art in heaven and then he talked about while we were praying this prayer I was worried I didn't know the words the first five I didn't know what he was talking about and he led me and then it helped me say the words so I don't know what that means is the Lord saying he's returning sometime during this season 
This is how it was in my dream. The trees still had some green leaves, but most of them were yellow. There was a few brown leaves on the ground. Um, I don't know what that means. I know there are all these people that say he has to come on Rosh Hashanah, but uh, I don't think so. I think he's the God of the imminent. He could come at any time. If we all, if the devil knew it was Rosh Hashanah and the whole world knows it, we just live however we want in a few days before repent, right? Is that the way it goes? No. No man knows the day of the hour. But I want you, you guys to know that the Lord loves you and you have hope and that when you slip and fall, you don't go back to square one with the Lord. He never puts you back there. All you do is repent and tell him you're sorry. He knows, you see, Adam was the first man that was created by him, just like the angels were, a direct result of God's creative forces. You were created by Adam and Eve. You were procreated. So you are a lot less than Adam. There's no direct overshadowing of God's hand. God understands, you see. He made that law and convicted you with it. Then he sent his own son as your advocate and killed his own son so that you could be forgiven. That's how much he loves you. Think about this. Look at all the atrocities that happen every day on this planet from the beginning of time, from the killing of Cain, I mean of Abel until now by Cain. And God's seen, he's seen all of that. And it hurts him, just like it hurts you. Where do you think you get your emotions from? It's from God. We're God-like, so he feels sorrow and pain over that, and he has to suffer because he gave us all free will. He's so loving that he gave us free will, allows us to make our own choices. And so people choose to do these terrible things, and God has to stand by and watch as it happens because he can't interfere because he gave us free will. It was a gift just like he gave it to Adam, our father. Him and Eve, they had the first free will and they disobeyed. But you repent, see, and you're covered by the blood of the lamb, your sins are. And it's the, that's the thing to keep moving forward. Don't ever let the devil, the accuser, he's the enemy. He's the liar. He's the murderer. He's the thief. Satan is. And if you choose to follow him, that's your free will. You see, that's what people are doing. Until God renews this world, at the end, after it's over with, after the thousand-year reign of Christ and the battle of Armageddon, Gog and Magog war, that happens, and then Satan is cast away with all those bad people. Then God rolls up the universe and remakes it, and the earth is new, and there's no more need for a sea anymore. And uh, everything is going to be like it was supposed to be in the beginning. This is the matrix. None of this is real. Doesn't matter if you become a multi-millionaire here and you get all the shoes and all the high technology and all the girls in the world or all the guys in the world, whichever you are, you don't get anything at the end of it. It's all smoke and vapor. It's all nothing. The only thing that's important is that you realize who the creator is and that he loves you so much that he, that he wanted to show you that you were a sinner. And then he said, look how you need to die. You are convicted. Just like Adam. He said, in the day you eat of the fruit, you'll die. Well, that, did Adam die that day that they ate? No, he died in the day of the Lord. A thousand years, right? A day with the Lord is a thousand years and a thousand years is a day. Adam died at 960 years old. He didn't make it one day with the Lord. He died just like God said. All this stuff is symbolic. The Lord told me he's coming. When they proposed to take his home, are they doing that? Netanyahu, there's a prophecy about Benjamin Netanyahu by a lady by the name of Wendy. And she said he had served three terms and he'd see the end of the earth, the end of the world and the wrap up of this thing would happen during his term if she's correct. And what she said is happening. Uh, Israel is supposed to do the elections in 2017, but because of Netanyahu and his ideas and stuff, they're calling for a special election. They're going to dissolve the Knesset.
So if Netanyahu is supposed to go and see that come to pass, how is he going to be if he's not going to be pre uh, prime minister anymore? You see, all of this is wrapping up slowly. And it couldn't have happened in 2011 because things weren't aligned up right during that time. Look at Israel. Go to Aruch Shiva and look at that every day. People, Jews being stabbed and killed. You don't see it on the news. Arabs running them over with their cars. All this horrible stuff we don't see over here in America. The Middle East is on fire. Obama has made enemies out of Putin. The Lord showed me that Russia and China attack America and Israel is to be cut. I did a video about that almost two years ago. Go watch that. That is what's happening right now. Israel has been cut by President Obama, the Islamist. And now uh, America, they're talking about doing patrols in the Mexican Gulf down there with those TU-95 